Okay, so mark this day down in history because on May 9th, 2023, out of nowhere, like my man Randy Orton, Apple has officially announced Final Cut Pro for the iPad. This is not an April Fool's joke, this is for real. So iPads using the M1 chip and above will be able to run Final Cut Pro. And oh, also Logic Pro is gonna be launching for the iPad as well, and both of these will be officially releasing on May 23rd. So I'm on Apple's website right now, and we're taking a look at the uh, product page for Final Cut Pro on the iPad and they're talking about bringing your entire studio to the shoot which is nice just look at that man we've been waiting years for this look at that uh, so you can record edit finish and deliver all on the iPad and so they're saying that this has an all new creative interface which is going to be touch first so I'm still assuming that you'll be able to use like a mouse with this like a Bluetooth mouse that you pair to the iPad but they are saying that this is going to be great working with your fingers or your digits whatever you want to call them and also the Apple Pencil of course so um, you have the editing surface here so you can uh, scroll and scrub through your your timeline using your finger um, and also you'll be able to quickly you know kind of adjust uh, little clips and stuff which is nice also live drawing so this is going to be using the Apple Pencil so you can draw on on a frame and then you can actually go back and play it back and it will animate the drawing that you did. So this is gonna be really cool for creators who like to do these type of little touches um, on your videos to kind of highlight certain things. HDR support, um, obviously with these displays, you'll be able to really see the best of the best of your HDR content, um, especially on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, they're saying. Um, then also you have your iMovie import, so you can import directly from iMovie coming from your phone, and also you can import coming from your Mac as well, um, especially your Final Cut projects, you can uh, import them over onto your, your iPad. And then also, you know, Apple Pencil and then the keyboard support, so being able to get these things fully integrated with keyboard shortcuts cuts and stuff is going to be really nice um, so you don't just have to use your your finger so but I'm still not sure whether or not um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can use a mouse but we'll see um, if I can find that information by the time it gets into in this video here so also uh, multi-camera is in here which I use a lot for a lot of my videos I'm doing a lot of top-down and also me forward-facing um, talking to you and stuff so this is going to be very nice to have and so you'll be able to sync up to four different cameras or audio sources in just one easy step and let me hit the, the play button here to kind of show how that works so yeah this is always very useful I just started using multi-cam uh, maybe like a couple of years ago and I'm like where has this been all my life uh, but then also you can uh, easily switch so at the bottom of the iPad you'll be able to see um, the different uh, camera angles that you have and you'll just be able to use your finger to touch and switch so I know on the uh, on the Mac you can bring up all the different windows at the same time but I don't know if they have the same interface where you can just have it at the bottom which this looks to be very intuitive but um, that looks nice and also your angle editor to be able to adjust those as you need to and speed through work flows with fast cut automation here. So accelerate time consuming editing tasks by using fast cut features that leverage the power of Apple Silicon and uh, machine learning here. So, oh, okay, so yeah, so I saw this in the video that they showed um, where you have uh, background removal very easily. So it'll be able to isolate a subject like um, this person sitting here talking um, and you'll be able to completely get rid of the background without needing a green screen or anything like that. And then you'll be able to insert um, different backgrounds very easily just like this. So um, the green screen, definitely still is going to be kind of the, the, the best way to get the, the absolute best looking footage um, but this is going to be very easy for something if you don't have a green screen or you're looking to do something um, kind of quick this is going to be nice and this will also be coming with auto crop so you'll be able to quickly adjust your content for short form content like YouTube shorts or Instagram reels that are shot in the vertical format um, so you'll be able to have that done very quickly in your kind of your editing landscape so you don't have to do too much work with that so I like that also voice isolation is just going to make the background noise go bye bye and then you'll be able to have your voice uh, be loud and clear so let's keep scrolling down here so they have some um, titles and transitions and all effects are going to be all included so it looks like some stuff that I don't see in the big boy version or the Mac version of Final Cut so I'm liking these uh, types of different designs that they're adding so you have dynamic titles um, also different effects um, so you can add some different quick little color schemes and stuff with your video content um, you have music and then also you do you have background so when you do use that ability to be able to uh, kind of uh, do that background removal they have some really cool designs here so again I, I use Final Cut I'm not a super heavy Final Cut user I don't know um, how much of this stuff is already in it as far as some of these different designs and stuff but from what I can tell I think some of this stuff is going to be new for this uh, 
version for the iPad. And then also they have this third party content, but they say this is coming soon. So I think this might mean that Final Cut Pro for the iPad might have its own like kind of like an app store for it where they're gonna be working with certain developers who can make third party plugins and maybe some different things. And so yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see all of these different plugins inside of the app so you don't have to go to everyone's website and stuff and you'll be able to have a very easy place to buy third party plugins. So that's really nice. And then we have getting the perfect shot. So if you have one of the latest iPad Pros, you can take ProRes video. So that's um, pretty nice to be able to do. But also you'll, you'll just be able to have some manual controls to control the white balance exposure and things like that. Also, you can just use it to monitor. Maybe you're on set and you're the director and you want to be able to see what's going on. You can monitor the uh, audio levels and different things, even for external microphones. Um, then ProRes video, as I just mentioned, um, if you have one of the latest iPad Pros, you can do that. Then also save. So you'll be able to save your footage directly into your project if you are using the iPad to record. And then we have advanced features for Pro Workflows. So ProRes RAW, um, then you have some color grading here, then you have keyframing, um, then you have cinematic mode, which, you know, that's kind of hit and miss, but you have that here where you can actually adjust the focus of the video um, that you're taking all inside of uh, Final Cut Pro here. And then share, so you'll be able to share directly to, you know, popular so uh, social media platforms and stuff in HDR and SDR. So you'll be able to export a project to Final Cut Pro for my Mac to be able to get even more features and more things or maybe more plugins that might not be available for the iPad version of uh, this. And then finally, what does it cost? So this will be available as a monthly subscription as the first option for $4.99, or you can do a yearly subscription for $49. Um, so you can activate a one month free trial after installing Final Cut Pro for the iPad from the App Store. So I know some people might have a little bit of uh, concern with this because um, the desktop version of Final Cut Pro, you just pay a one-time fee and you own it forever, which I personally like. But this option will give you a lower cost option especially if you're just trying to try it out to see if it will work for your workflow and so yeah this is nice but i still would like to see a one-time fee option for people out there who know they're going to be using this a lot they just want to pay that one-time fee and be done with it but this is another revenue stream for apple so definitely for their uh, bottom line this is definitely going to be good for them but no matter what we have final cut pro for the ipad but i'm gonna be honest with you the, the only thing that's more exciting than this right now is the fact that Apple is releasing this information before WWDC, which happens at the beginning of June. So I'm thinking that they're doing this right now because they wanna kind of clear up some time and space for all the other goodies that they're gonna be announcing at WWDC. And whether that's an AR or VR headset, that's been the talk of the town for a little while. I can't wait to see that. Or maybe, you know, more introduction into the, the Mac Pro. We'll finally be able to see what that really is going to be all about. And maybe Maybe some other things that we don't know, but they have the iPad OS to talk about, iOS, they have Mac OS, uh, Watch OS, they have a lot of stuff that they need to talk about. So I think them announcing this right now just has me even more excited for what's coming down the pipeline in WWDC. So anyway, what are your thoughts? Drop a comment down below about Final Cut finally coming to the iPad. I know for me personally, I, I like this because I'm not gonna be carrying my MacBook Air with me all the time because I really only bring my MacBook Air with me when I'm traveling just to be able to edit on Final Cut. But now I can just take my iPad, watch a movie on the plane, but then also edit when I'm in the hotel room or whatever. So I'm happy for it. But again, let me know your thoughts down below. But like always, I do wanna thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.